My Sentinels have been sitting on the shelf naked for far too long. It's time to get some paint on that plastic. And what better way than to try my hand at that iconic pattern from the 80s and 90s, NATO 3 color camouflage. I had a lot of exposure to that camouflage pattern having grown up in and around US Army bases. It's a disruptive pattern consisting of green, brown, and black, and was intended for use by NATO ground forces. It's similar to the US woodland pattern that was used for US uniforms, the primary difference being the lack of a fourth color, sand. The sand still managed to sneak onto vehicles from time to time. Now, I don't have an exhaustive selection of paints. I will tell you exactly what I use in this video as I use it, but that doesn't mean that what I have is the best choice, is don't be afraid to substitute. All right, with that out of the way, let's get to it. If you've seen my previous video on how to magnetize a Sentinel, you'll know I have lots of bits to paint. To handle this, I have a jig I made from scraps that will let me prime all the bits in a single go. With everything mounted up, I used Army Painter's Army Green. I have a video in the works for a better version of this jig, so think about getting subscribed if you want to see how it's made. Only after priming does it occur to me that I haven't done anything with the base. Let's take Vallejo Thick Mud and spread a generous coat on the base, smoothing it out once we're happy with the thickness. Next, let's place two small rocks that I found just on the side of the road onto the base. We'll add a little more mud to blend them in. It turns out that rocks make excellent rocks. To add some detail, I spread out some Army Painter's Brown Battleground around the real rocks. These will make great pebbles. That covers the ground texture. We just need to let it dry before giving it a go with the primer as well. To start painting, we'll outline the disruptive black regions using Army Painter's Matte Black. I'm drawing lines which curve randomly, looking to cover a healthy portion of the mini. It's also important here not to forget which pockets will be filled in with the black and which are going to be left green. Maybe paint the interior of each region just to give yourself a visual cue. I make sure the regions wrap around the model as well and occasionally fork them. Once we're happy with our outline, we need to fill them in. I avoid details that I know are going to be painted later, but I also didn't worry myself too much about being sloppy around them. In most cases, this will take two coats. Once the torso's done, it's time to repeat the process to all the other bits and pieces, making sure, when possible, to continue the flow of the black pattern. For instance, see how the black regions flow seamlessly onto the scout cage. Next, I use Army Painter's Leather Brown and repeat the outlining process. This time though, I only make small patches instead of the sprawling coverage of the black. Here's another look at the canopies now that the brown is in place. Already this pattern is looking pretty good. Once we're happy with the camo, barring any cleanup that I'm saving for later, I think it's time to go back to the base and get that base coat out of the way. For the dirt, I'll use Citadel's Bugman's Glow, as it has a nice red tinge that is similar to soil in my area. It also helps differentiate the model from the base. We'll talk about that more later. I follow this up by using Citadel's Eschen Gray to paint the stones and pebbles. To get all those little rocks without undoing the dirt, I use the overbrush technique. For those who don't know, overbrushing is kind of like dry brushing, but with the brush just a bit wet. You want to catch the peaks of the object being brushed, leaving the recesses their original color. That's good for now. Let's play around with the model and check our progress. Yep, I'm pretty happy thus far. My temptation at this point is to dry brush the base using Citadel's Terminatus Stone, but I'll caution you against doing the same, as it ends up being premature. Sure, it looks good now, but we're just going to be on doing it all pretty soon. I'm only keeping this bit in so as not to confuse you later when you see that I've dry brushed it in the background. Now the point of camouflage is to make the object blend in with its surroundings, but I think if we stay true to that intention, we'll end up with something pretty boring. So let's start adding more colors. Out comes the Citadel Lead Belcher. I'll use this to cover anything mechanical or that just doesn't make sense to be covered in camouflage paint. The various guns, for instance, are getting a great deal of lead belcher, as do various accessories like the armored canopy and the pirate's control stick, pirate, arg, and the pilot's control stick. The Sentinel box art makes a great reference here. Don't ever be afraid to use reference images when painting, even if you're going to be doing something drastically different. 
For the Astra Militarum emblems that cover every surface of the Sentinel, I want to use an off-white color, but apparently Citadel's Korox white is terrible. Everyone I've asked about this seems to agree. If you don't already own a pot of Korox white, just don't. It took some serious elbow grease to get enough to use here, but it was enough. So let's just go ahead, get these skulls and these emblems painted up. I'll decide later whether I want to put in the effort to save this pot of Korox white or just bin it. Next, we'll cover the various cables and tubes with corn red. This gives us a nice color break from the camouflage without clashing against it. Before we get much further, I want to do something about this cockpit. In the future, I think I'll paint the interior prior to assembly, but it's too late for that now. The seat will get a coat of Army Painter's brown leather, and the panels will get some lead belcher. We'll add some red to some of these lights and dials for good measure. We can go further into the interior of the cockpit if we're so inclined, but since it'll be invisible during the course of play anyways, I'm gonna leave it here. Added to the list of things to improve on in the future. The pilot, however, will get a little more care. His vest, boots, and helmet are getting a coat of Citadel's Corvus Black, which isn't really black. We aren't using a true black, because if we do, we'll severely limit our ability to shade the recesses. Using Citadel's Cadian Flesh Tone, we're going to get the face painted up as well as the hands. We'll also do some highlighting using Kislev Flesh. We'll catch the nose, cheeks, and the knuckles. Now we'll break out Kalidor Sky just to get some paint on those visors. This will serve as a good foundation for when we come back later to do some highlighting. I accidentally got some paint on the boot, but if you're very quick, you can rub it right off without any effort. Lastly, we're going to paint his fatigues with Citadel's Death Guard Green. The slightly lighter color helps give the impression of the uniform being fabric, and makes the pilot stand out just a little bit more. There, that's the pilot's base coat done. We'll come back to him in a little bit. Jumping over to the Hunter Killer Missile for no reason other than I felt like it, the nose cone is going to get several coats of Army Painter's Matte White. The missile looks pretty simple like this though, so using some masking tape, we'll add a ring of corn red behind that cone. Now that's an intimidating missile. Everything has a base coat now, except for the various lights, windows, and optics, so it's the best time to apply some shading. I apply Citadel's Agrax Earthshade on the base and the pilot to give them warm shadows, while I use non-oil on the Sentinel itself, giving it a cool, mechanical shadow. At the end of it, I realized that the whole model wash might not have been such a great idea. I would have been better served by applying the wash strategically, only in the recesses. Applying it haphazardly like this just makes the whole model feel dirty. I'm adding this to the list of improvements. It's nothing we can't fix, though. With the wash out of the way, let's go ahead and start highlighting the model, starting at the base. We'll begin with another round of dry brushing, more heavily this time. You'll see that I actually started with Eschen Grey just to clean up some of the wash first before moving on to the Terminata Stone. Between the wash and this highlight, we now have a great sense of depth. Let's go ahead and spend some time detailing the pilot. First, we'll clean up all this excess wash using our base coat colors, doing our best to leave the wash in the recesses. Then we can add some highlights to the flesh using Citadel's Kislev Flesh. For the control stick, I want to paint a screen, starting with a coat of Citadel's Wog Flesh. We'll then use Citadel's Warpstone Glow for details and Cyberite Green for highlights. Once we're happy with the result, we can move on to this semi-sphere thing adjacent to it. I'm treating it like an indicator light that's maybe also a button. Corn Red gets to come out again, followed by Citadel's Mephiston Red as a highlight, and a splotch of Army Painter's White just to increase that sense of it being a glossy piece of glass. Now let's add some shine to the pilot's visor. I start with a diagonal patch using Citadel's Temple Guard Blue, then apply a streak of matte white using a hatching technique. Whoops, that was a bit too much white. That's an easy fix though. Just a little more Temple Guard Blue to clean up, reapply the white, and I think we've got a decent visor. While the white is still wet, maybe I'll add another dot of pure white to the red bobble. Let's also not forget to highlight the emblem on the helmet, making sure just to catch the peaks. Now it really pops. For some final highlights on the control stick, I'm using Citadel's Runefang Steel. Not because it's the best choice for highlighting, but because it's what I have. I would recommend a brighter metal if you have one on hand. 
If you enjoy this sort of painting video and want to see more like it in the future, let me know in the comments and I'll invest into expanding my palette. Before continuing with the rest of the model, I need to deal with something I've been ignoring up until now. I need to bore out the various barrels. Well, the time for that was before priming, right along with cleaning the mold lines. <sighs> I'm not very good at this. While I drill these barrels out, let's reflect that it's never too late to fix mistakes like this. Once all the barrels are properly hollow, we'll give them a bit of lead belcher, wait for that to dry, and then a healthy amount of Nuln oil. Now it's time to add all sorts of fancy details. I've never painted anything like a plasma coil before, so for me this was a real challenge. In fact, I ended up painting the plasma coil twice, the first of which you can see on the screen now. I was initially happy with the results of my first attempt and had moved on, but the longer I sat on it, the less happy I was. The tipping point came when I saw another model with these openings painted to glow like the coils, thus pushing me to paint a second time. I'm starting with Temple Guard Blue for the base coat, covering the coil completely as well as the openings on the barrel. In my original attempt, I tried for a subtle object source lighting effect, often simply referred to as OSL, mixing Kalidor Sky with some matte medium and lightly glazing anything close to the coil that would have direct line of sight. Okay, the outer rim doesn't have line of sight. Sometimes you gotta take liberties to emphasize an effect. Think of it as the air around the source glowing. I'm being careful to preserve this as redoing it would be a pain. I often see these coils painted with white peaks and dark valleys, but I think it makes more sense for the valleys to be the highlighted region, since that's where the heat is going to be more concentrated. These coils are there to dissipate heat after all. Think of any heat sink and you'll know what I mean. But ultimately, you're free to paint it however you want. If you want a purple base coat and pink fins, go crazy. I mix matte white into Temple Guard Blue and paint just within the recesses of the coil, something easier said than done. The temptation is to use a very fine brush for this, but the paint dries much quicker on a small brush, so finding a happy medium between finesse and paint longevity was key here. Something else I could try here is to make a wash of white, but I didn't think of that in the moment. When that first application has dried, it's time to apply a small amount of straight white, this time only covering the bottom half of each recess, doing the same for the other various openings. The last thing we'll do is apply a darker blue, in this case Kalidor Sky, and just catch the peaks of the coils. This helps give the impression that the heat is being dissipated on these outer fins. Once we're happy with the coils, we'll go back and clean up all the mess we made using our original base coat colors. I think the second attempt is an improvement over the first if still not perfect. That said, I'm happy with what I've achieved given my inexperience, and it's important not to compare myself to other people who have been painting for many years, potentially decades. We'll add to the list and move on. Now it's back to Kalidor Sky to base coat all of the glass on the model. This includes viewports, sensors, sights, indicator lights, and optics. We'll build our highlights up using increasingly bright mixes of Temple Guard Blue and Matte White, finishing off with just a spot of white. With the glass complete, we'll follow up by painting these wipers with lead belcher, as well as cleaning around all of the blue. And of course, let's take a moment to appreciate our progress. For the spotlight, I'm basing with Averland Sunset. The process of painting this is similar to the optics atop the armored canopy. Instead of just building up my highlight color of phalanx yellow, I'm also working down to Jokero orange. This ended up being a repeated back and forth of blending until I reached a point where I'm satisfied with the depth. I'll follow a similar process with the light at the front of the torso, but using simple vertical gradients. Finally, I'm applying Agrax Earthshade in the recesses of these rings. The final touch to the headlamp is to paint the frame in lead belcher, highlighting in runefang steel. We're hitting the end game now. Let's go ahead and highlight all the emblems with our matte white to make them really stand out. Then we'll hit the various cables and tubes with a highlight of Mephiston Red. Before we do any more highlighting, I'm going to do a final cleanup with Army Green, Leather Brown, and Matte Black, fixing all of the earlier mistakes, cleaning up panels where the wash was too heavy, and just refreshing spots where the paint may have rubbed off. 
With everything cleaned up, I've decided to apply a little bit of dry brush with lead belcher to give a subtle hint of wear and tear. I'm not going for a battle damaged look here, but this will give the model a sense that it hasn't just walked out the factory door. Then I'm going to go over every metal part on the model and apply a highlight with, you guessed it, Runevang Steel. Now I'm thinking the exhaust pipes would look a little better if they were a little sooty, so we're going to use our matte black and just give it a little bit of dry brushing. Confession time. I did experiment with some serious wear and tear on the Scout canopy using Typhus Corrosion and Lead Belcher, but I wasn't happy with it at all, so that's where it stopped. I didn't want to risk messing up the rest of the model after this much work, which I am quite happy with. I'm going to do some off-screen practice before I commit to that sort of wear and tear in a video. Let's spend a moment and wrap up the base. I'm applying some watered down Mod Podge over the dirt before sprinkling some Woodland Scenic blended turf near around the rocks, followed by a much heavier blanket of Army Painter's Battlefield Grass Green over the dirt. Then I'm going to apply a mix of Army Painter and Gamer Grass Tufts. These larger grassland varieties in the grass 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 and these two millimeter dark green tufts under and around the stones. Finally, we need to clean that base's rim with two coats of our original army green. The last highlight I'm going to apply is a heavy dry brush of Terminatus stone all across the camouflaged portions of the model. Oh look, it snuck in anyways. This greatly enhances the profile of the model, making it pop on the table, and acts to bring the green, brown, and black of the camo together into a single cohesive scheme. One last detail I'm going to add is a unit marker on this panel here, just to add a little more color to the model. A base coat of corn red, an edge highlight of Mephiston red on all the edges except for the bottom, and one final edge highlight of a mix of Mephiston red and Wraithbone. Why Wraithbone? Well, by using a tan instead of a white, I ensure that my highlight color doesn't start to become pinkish. It results in an overall warm highlight color. Anyways, with the highlight in place, it's time to add an identifier. I've chosen the number four. Yep, just a four, though instead of using a transfer, I've chosen to freehand it, practicing a few fonts on paper before committing to the brush. I initially tried to use one of those paint pens that you can get at any arts and crafts store, but it was frankly terrible. I'll be sticking to freehand for this one. I'm working slowly, doing my best to draw straight lines, except where they need to be curves, and cleaning up with corn red to refine those lines. There, a small detail that adds a good deal of character to the model. That makes for one completely painted Astra Militarum Sentinel in NATO 3 color camouflage. Let's take some glamour shots, shall we? I want to reiterate that I'm far from being an expert painter, but I am happy with how this project turned out. And if you stuck with me until the end, thank you. I won't win any competitions with this, but I also won't be insecure putting it down on the table. I also know I've learned a lot in the process. I hope some of you out there learned something during this video too, and for everyone else, I hope you enjoyed the process all the same. If you want to see more videos like this, think about getting subscribed down below. I do have some Cadians that need to be painted up to match the Sentinel, so there's that to look forward to. I also have so much more planned for this channel covering topics from 40k, Battletech, general terrain crafting, and basically everything tabletop. I also have an Instagram where I'm trying to share more progress pictures, so if you're interested in that, you can follow me at Tabletop Ackley. That's it for this video. I'm Tabletop Ackley. Thanks for hanging out with me today.